Chapter 4. I had Chio's hand clasped in my own, I'll be honest it made me a little bit happy. When we arrived outside the tavern I saw Drake standing there menacingly while cracking his knuckles. He was looking down at four guys who had been clearly beaten up pretty badly, their faces were all bruised and comically swelled up. They almost looked like cartoon characters, they were rolling around on the street while moaning in pain. Meanwhile, Drake barely looked like he had even been in a fight. He didn't have any bruises or cuts, at least that were visible to me, and his clothes weren't even messed up. Just how strong is this guy? They might have been weak, but still all four of them were adventurers. I was trying not to stare with a dumbfounded expression on my face, but even Chio had her mouth hanging wide open. I decided to lead her to the scene in question, after all, I think those four have something they should say to this adorable cat girl here. As we approached Drake noticed us and gave a smile and a wave. I grimaced, that friendly smile is unsettling coming from a guy that just beat up four adventurers without breaking a sweat. He kneeled down and quietly said something, I couldn't hear it from this distance. From my best guess he was probably threatening those guys saying something along the lines of, apologize for what you did or I'll keep hitting you. Immediately afterwards all four of those adventurers got on their hands and knees and bowed their head in front of Chio. We're sorry. One of them lifted his head up, he probably hoped that was all they had to do in order to get off the hook. Chio obviously still wore an angry expression obviously, these four weren't only bullying her but she also had the strength to take them all out just like Drake did. I don't know how strong she is with her fists, but I know she could handle herself with a sword. That would probably result in death though, so it's good it never came to that. I don't want your apologies. Give me your word you won't try this again. Chio hissed. Oh of course. We wouldn't dream of it, we reflected on what we did and we're very sorry. The man bowed down again, he was practically yelping at this point. Well, I guess that's fine. Chio walked closer and kneeled down, her fluffy white cat ears flicked a little bit and her tail swished back and forth happily. The men smiled and looked relieved. Chio smiled back. Also, you'll need to pay me back for the cloak you tore. It was on the pricey side so I hope you four got a decent payday for the raid today. Also, since you ruined our peaceful dinner I think you should go ahead and cover our bill while you're at it okay? Chio giggled sweetly, but the men's faces went pale. Scary, I think they might end up being more afraid of her than they will be of Drake after all this. It's been about a week since that whole incident, luckily everything worked out smoothly. Chio got a new cloak that looks even nicer than the one that got ripped, plus we were reimbursed for our meal and drinks by those four. On top of that, we haven't had any problems with those guys or even any of the other adventurers since then. I wondered if word of what happened got around and they just decided it would be more trouble than it's worth. Or maybe those four were just the only assholes in the guild. Either way, I was happy not to have to deal with anything like that anymore. Miss Marielle, your stance is all wrong. If you swing your sword like that then it probably won't even slice cleanly through a monster. Here, do it like this. See? Chio was giving me some much needed sword training. I tended to swing my sword like I was playing baseball which while violent it didn't seem too effective. My sword usually got stuck and I would have to kick in order to pull it out. Also since I didn't know anything about sword maintenance I think the edge was getting pretty dull and I hadn't been cleaning the blood off of it properly. Chio would strike a beautiful stance and slash her sword with fine-tuned precision and never leave an opening in her stance. She was teaching me as much as she could, but I wasn't one for that kind of graceful movement. I would thrash my sword violently and kick with my foot whenever we ran into goblins. I was slowly adopting Chio's style over time but you can't just learn a masterful move set like that overnight. We were out in the field each day hunting down the goblins in the area, I started to wonder if we would make them go extinct soon. At the end of each day we would take our haul to the guild and cash in, we weren't splitting the money three ways equally but instead Chio would have half of the total pay and the other half was split between Drake and myself. Chio wanted to split it even three ways but I didn't think that was fair, she wasn't only more experienced than us but she was also training me with a sword and teaching us tracking skills. Splitting the pay three ways, equally would be unfair to her, even though she didn't see it that way. 
I still convinced her to take a bigger cut than us, at least until we get good enough to start pulling our own weight. We had dinner at a restaurant further in town that was a bit less rowdy than the one by the inn. We would usually avoid that tavern ever since that day, but we did still eat there occasionally. So, I've decided to join your party. Let's make it official tomorrow, Chio said happily. I silently pumped my fist under the table, it was what I was hoping for all along. How do we make it official by the way? Drake asked. We'll have to go to the guild and submit a request to register as a party. If we're in a party and we earn enough results then they will start sending us on bigger hunts. While that will be more dangerous it also comes with bigger rewards. Chio spoke in a matter-of-fact sort of way. She was so cute. Oh, but the party will need to have a name. What should it be? She tiled her head in wonder. Hmm. I'm terrible at naming things, you got any ideas? I wasn't going to come up with anything good, especially not on the spot so I asked Drake. Let me think, it should be something that sounds kinda badass since we're literally killing monsters for a living. How about, Revenant, or something like that? He combed a finger through his facial hair. That sounds cool, what does it mean? Chio asked. It's basically someone that everyone thinks is dead that comes back for revenge. Drake said, I like it, but maybe it should be a bit longer. Like, Revenant of the, something. Chio chimed in. I thought about it for a second. Death, if I think about the closest I've been to death it would hands down be the polar bear attack. My mind wandered for a minute before I remembered something else. Crow, I blurted out. Drake and Chio panned over to me. That's it. Revenant of the Crow, it sounds pretty cool. Chio was pretty happy with it, I couldn't help but smile back at her. Drake seemed to nod his agreement as well. It's settled, we'll go ahead and officially register the party at the guild tomorrow. I made a toast with the two of them before downing a glass of wine in celebration. I count 253 goblin ears, that comes out to 1265 copper coins. We don't have that many on hand so I'll have to pay you in silver. That comes up to 12 silver and 65 copper. Would you like me to calculate for taxes now or take the full sum? The receptionist at the guild had spent quite a while counting on his primitive calculator. It had been a few weeks since we officially became a party of three, in that time we've been getting better and better at hunting down goblin mobs. Please take out the taxes now, I greatly appreciate it. I said, I volunteered to handle cashing in for today so that Chio could go home and take a bath and Drake could go get something to eat. We would all be meeting up later anyways so there was no need for all three of us to stay and do the boring stuff like this. It also showed the trust we had built up with each other, Chio and Drake knew I would never take the money and run. You know you three continue to impress me, every day you bring in a huge haul like this. That consistency speaks a lot about your team, it's more than some of the other parties around here manage at least. The receptionist had never given praise or compliments to us before so I had to admit it caught me off guard. Oh, ah uh, thanks. We more or less do it because we need the money though. Is that so? The receptionist gleamed as if I had fallen into some kind of trap or something. Why yeah? I wanted to shriek back at that moment. Ha ha well, if you're interested, I have an opportunity for your party. It'll be dangerous, but the payment will make your goblin hunts look like chump change. Wanna hear about it? He gave me a big smile but that expression looked more like something a con man would wear. I wouldn't want to make any hasty decisions without my teammates, maybe we can discuss it tomorrow if that's alright? Be here tomorrow morning, this is a big job but it's a golden opportunity to work alongside the Knights of the Divine Light. They're the strongest adventure party in Valenheim, they need some extra hands for their job tomorrow. The man handed the money for today's hunt over to me and I nodded. We'll be here first thing in the morning. I turned on my heel and left the building. If this job was as big as he was saying then I could only imagine how much we might get paid. I don't know about Drake or Chio, but me personally, I've been growing more and more exhausted lately. After days and days on the grind just hunting goblins I started to realize how out of shape I was. I mean, the only exercise I was used to before we got teleported here was the occasional morning jog. I was more athletic when I was younger but after becoming an adult I had neglected to put in the time as much. Now I felt like I would fall behind if I didn't give it my all, 
Chia was already a strong warrior and Drake could undoubtedly handle himself in most situations. That left me with my sloppy sword work, weak upper body strength and at best average endurance. To make up for my shortcomings I'd been going all out recently so as not to look pathetic in front of my teammates, but the wear and tear was getting to me. I'd like to convince Drake and Chio to sign up for this big job so that we can justify taking a nice little vacation afterwards. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. We were walking in a large group outside the gates of town. We met up with a bunch of horse-drawn carriages that took us up northwest. We were well past the borders of Valenheim now, but that was the last thing on my mind. We had signed up to explore a labyrinth filled with monsters that would be much stronger than goblins. I was the one that talked my teammates into taking this job but now I was getting nervous. The Knights of the Divine Light were a party of seven, I had seen a few of them on our first goblin raid where we met Chio. The magician in the big pointy hat was the same guy that cast those awesome big flashy spells at the beginning of the battle. I wanted to talk to him and ask about how he did that, but I was worried it might make our party look incompetent so I refrained. Okay Mari, you talked us into this craziness so I'm assuming you have a plan? Drake seems to have woken up on the wrong side of the bed today. My plan is for us to survive and finish this job. And how do you know we'll be able to do that? I don't recall us taking down any labyrinths lately. He glared at me so I just glared back. In case you haven't been paying attention, we're not alone. The receptionist said that the other seven adventurers we're traveling with are part of the most famous team in the kingdom. So, because they're famous you think we don't have anything to worry about then? Geez, Drake really was cranky today. Of course we'll have to hold our own, but it should be within the realm of our capabilities to finish the job. And what makes you say that? I don't think the receptionist would have offered us the job if he didn't think we could handle it. After all you have to remember that we're only assisting the other party, we're just extra hands here. So stop overthinking it. I sighed. I was exasperated, everything Drake was saying was valid but I had already thought about all of it and come to this conclusion on my own. I had a feeling this job would be worth it, in fact we'd be idiots not to take it. I think she's right, plus I've fought a lot of strong monsters before so I'll be able to gauge the difficulty of this labyrinth pretty quickly. Chio chimed into the conversation. I was nodding in affirmation the whole time she spoke. I feel more at ease with you here Chio. we'll try not to hold you back too much. By the way Drake, how many arrows did you bring for this? I asked. They're surprisingly expensive, that's why I try to recollect them whenever I shoot a monster. I have about 50, give or take, which is more than double the amount I usually take on our goblin hunts. Drake replied, I had my sword sharpened professionally at a shop yesterday afternoon, that ran a full silver coin so I definitely don't want to pay for it too often. I said, if you neglect your sword it could cost you your life in a struggle. Chio chided me, yes mom, I resigned, M mom, I'm not Erwa, her flustered faces were adorable. Oh yeah, I forgot she called me mom once. Well, I guess this is payback for that. I felt a sinister cackle welling up inside me. It looks like one of the other carriages are coming over this way. Drake pointed towards our right side. We were making it out of the big grass fields and onto some sort of main road. It wasn't paved or anything, it looked more like a well-traveled dirt trail. Make sure you guys are ready, we're gonna stop up ahead and walk the rest of the way. It's on a small mountain and we don't want to risk being too loud and alerting the monsters inside the labyrinth's entrance. It was a big burly, man in silver armor. He had short dark hair and an unkempt beard. His voice was loud enough to carry over the horses and the turning wooden wheels. We all stopped on the side of the road and started trekking north once more. The man who was talking to us earlier handed over three large leather book bags. Wait, what's this for? I asked. The three of you will primarily be carrying whatever loot we find inside the labyrinth. Our party should be capable of handling whatever lies inside but we needed to have some strong luggage carriers just in case things get rough. We've personally taken down several labyrinths and dungeons in the past all around Valenheim's borders so this is nothing new for us. That being said though, we have lost luggage carriers and helpers in the past so I don't want you guys to be disillusioned into thinking there's no danger here. By the way, my name is Sion. The man shook each of our hands. 
Geez, way to scare the newbie's scion. A girl came up and smacked him on the back playfully. She had chocolate-colored skin and long pointy ears as well as tribal tattoos peeking through the light armor on her arms and legs. I'm just making sure they know what they're in for Che. Sion crossed his arms and replied in a serious tone. I'm just making sure they know what they're in for Che. The girl Che just made a pouty face and mocked Sion. I couldn't help but laugh at their exchange, Che shot me a big smile in return. Hello, I'm Che, and this big guy is Sion. As stupid as he looks he's actually pretty reliable in combat. Che has a certain mischievous smile that just lights a fire inside of me. It's true I am reliable, wait hey. I don't look stupid. Sion shouted back at her which made us all bust out laughing. We all introduced ourselves to the seven members of the Knights of the Divine Light and they introduced themselves as well. Sion was the big guy, Che was the healer of the group and she was a dark elf as it turns out. Their leader was a man in bright gold armor named Ian Braun. He was the only man in Valenheim known to be able to use divine light magic which was where the the party got their name. There was a man named Gar that seemed disinterested in the whole conversation. From what I heard, he was a brawler though he looked toned I wouldn't say he was super beefy or anything so, brawler, was a surprise to me. Simmons or, Sim, for short was their party's archer. When he heard that Drake was an archer they tested each other with a friendly game of target practice. Drake won the game without breaking a sweat, he made an impossible shot which Sim couldn't replicate. It impressed Sim so much that he gave Drake an expensive looking crossbow as a reward. There was a muscular red-haired woman with scars on her face named Helena. I didn't know if it was her general demeanor or her red hair but she reminded me of Drake a bit. Helena was a swordswoman, a proper one unlike myself I should add. I felt like I could learn a lot from these people, and the atmosphere around them was heartwarming. The dynamic was similar to something like a big group of friends that knew each other well enough to joke around even in serious times. Steph Morose was the mage that wore the cool wizard hat. We had a long way to walk so I decided to take the plunge and ask about magic. So, I saw you during the goblin hunt a while back and you were doing some unbelievable things with fire and wind. I'm assuming that was magic, but I was wondering how you did it. I was a bit hesitant especially because of how Steph looked like an actual wizard. I was also worried about if he might think less of our party as a whole for asking but it turns out my concerns were unfounded. Ah, yes. I used two spells that day if I recall. Fireball is a beginner spell and Wind Scythe is intermediate. Only an expert like myself can cast two spells back to back like that. You have fine tastes my fair maiden. Steph tried to take my hand and kiss it but I pulled away. Ew, fair maiden. What is wrong with this guy? I was utterly grossed out. I was just, I wanted to know how you did that but if that's too much to ask, I began shrieking away but Steph wouldn't let me off the hook that easily. Ah, yes. You would like an introduction to magic, you've come to the right place. After all, I am considered one of the top 10 best magic casters in Valenheim. Not to brag or anything. Steph moved almost theatrically, I couldn't tell if he was being serious or not. If I didn't know any better I'd say he lost a bet and someone dared him to act this way. I really hoped that was the case here, otherwise this would be just sad. Yeah, I would appreciate if you showed me the basics since we have a long walk ahead of us. My smile was so fake it was literally plastered on my face. I was trying to be polite but the fair maiden stuff seriously had to stop. As you wish my fair maid ack. Che came in with a flying kick from the side, my savior. Steph you dummy. Can't you tell she doesn't like being called fair maiden. I keep telling you to pay attention to others when you're talking to them. Che yelled at him, Steph looked back at me apologetically which made me forgive him instantly. He was just like a kid there's no way I could hold it against him over something trivial like that. As you may or may not know, magic is the result of a process. There are magic particles in the air and our body absorbs them and stores them. The amount of magic particles that our body is able to store and process is called, mana, and it refers to our magic capacity. Everyone has different capabilities and capacities. Steph's lecture had begun. How do you know what someone's capacity is? I asked. 
There's many ways to tell what someone's capacity is, but the most direct and effective way is to see how many spells they can cast before they run out of mana. What is a good spell to start with? I asked. Hmm, in the beginner list of spells I'd say, Wind Slash, is probably the best place to start. Here, hold out your hand and repeat after me. He said, Ostendite mihi venti seculi fortitudinum tuum, succeed in imicos tuos. Ferum venti. I immediately felt a course of energy run through my body and a burst of wind blew forth into the distant air. I was shocked. Wow, that was impressive, your spell was even stronger than mine and it was your very first time casting it. Steph looked a bit dejected like I had stolen his thunder. I felt kinda bad when he made a face like that. As it turns out I have a knack for this magic. It was my first time casting it so I'm surprised too. I said, trying to smooth things over. Well, anyways, that was called elemental magic. It falls in the realm of attack magic, but there are many different types of magic that different people are suited for. For example, from what I've heard your friend Chio uses a spell called, Stealth, which falls under body enhancement magic. Many others in my party use different kinds of body enhancement magic that makes them faster or stronger. There's also transformation magic, which many use to transform their weapons into something else. Transformation magic works on other things as well, but it's mostly used to turn someone's weapons into magic weapons. Then there's summoning magic, mostly used to summon creatures that you can form a contract with. There's divine light magic which our leader uses, it's a special kind of magic that is rarely seen so if you get the chance you should try to get a good look if Ian uses it. Then there are many forbidden types of magic such as shadow magic and blood magic. Forbidden magic is considered inhuman and it's illegal to learn it. So unfortunately I can't teach you anything about those forms of magic. I see, thank you, this has been enlightening. I said. It's my pleasure my fair my ehem, I mean Miss Marielle. Steph caught himself that time at least. He did an elegant bow, though it was hard to take it seriously when he was wearing a big wizard hat and a cheesy robe like that. I did appreciate all the information though so I kindly bowed back with a smile. After this job perhaps I could teach you some more of what I know about magic. I can see that you have potential, though it pains me to admit you might become a better magician than myself. I would still be honored to share my wisdom with you. Steph was laying it on thick, but I didn't mind. Sure, that sounds good. I was upbeat. If I could learn as many spells as this guy knew then I wouldn't feel like I was holding my party back anymore. The ground started to incline as we headed into a mountain range. Soon we climbed to a plateau in a wooded mossy area and I noticed the members of the Knights of the Divine Light go on high alert. Alright, the labyrinth is located just ahead so be on your guard. Sion spoke in a hushed tone and I nodded in return. I felt an ominous presence hanging in the air as the ten of us moved through the clearing. Aside from myself, Drake and Chio, the others have already been here at least once already. They came here to check out the scene before our party was hired for the job so they already knew what they were in for. Us, on the other hand had no idea what to expect outside of the few vague details we were given about it. We came to an open area, there was some kind of dogmen type monsters around but they were picked off easily by Gar and Sim. We were in the very back of the group so we had almost no chance of running into a monster and having to fight them ourselves. It was starting to become clearer by that point that our part really was only there to be luggage carriers or extra hands if need be. In most labyrinths and dungeons the monsters are known to use it as their hideout and attack people nearby. They retreat inside and hide any valuables they might have found on their victims such as gold and silver or even magic artifacts. We were hired to subjugate this labyrinth and part of the deal is that any treasures we find inside is ours. That treasure will be split between the ten of us evenly on top of our payment for the job so let's hope there is a lot inside. Sion got excited at the end there, I never would have pegged him for the money hungry type but you never know with some people. Is that why you gave us these backpacks? I asked. It looks like the beasts staking out this labyrinth are cobbleds. Their teeth and claws are said to be imbued with magic so they're valuable materials. Plus their left ears are proof of a kill which is five copper each just like goblins. Two of you should be enough for that while one of you should keep your bag light in case we find a lot of treasure inside the labyrinth. 
Sion was very patient in his explanation, something I appreciated for sure. It looked like Gar was cutting the ears and whatnot from each of the kobolds as we spoke so I guess now was the best time to decide. Which do you think will be the heaviest, the ears and stuff or the treasure? I asked. Well, hopefully the treasure. It is metal after all. Though we're planning to kill hundreds of kobolds by the end of the job so those carrying their teeth, claws and ears will be weighed down. Although Drake looks pretty strong so maybe you girls should just make him carry everything. Sion said. Maybe we should. I grinned. I would never. Chio pouted. Ha ha I'm just kidding. Anyways it's time to go ahead and enter the labyrinth. Sion dropped his smile and became serious at the drop of a hat. The change of mood almost gave me whiplash. I decided to focus as well. We decided that Drake and I would carry the kobold parts, if you will, and Chio can carry the treasure. If we found a lot of treasure and the bag got really heavy then she would switch with Drake since he was admittedly stronger than us physically speaking. There was a huge gate that stretched out overhead, inside was so dark I couldn't see anything at all. It looked like some sort of void, it sent a shiver down my spine. We followed the other party, inside after lighting our torches. While some of the other party members needed both hands, others like Sion, Che, Helena and even Ian their leader was carrying torches to light the way for the others. Likewise, out of the three of us in the back I was the only one holding a torch so that Drake and Chio wouldn't be hindered if a fight broke out. We made our way deeper and deeper into the labyrinth, occasionally we would hit a dead end and have to turn back to follow a different path. They always burned the bodies of the monsters after they cut their ears and claws and whatnot, I was curious about it so I asked why. It turns out that if you leave a monster's corpse for too long then it will become an undead like a zombie and that the more humans an undead monster ate the stronger they got. The strongest undead monsters were liches and vampires, though they've been hunted into near extinction. I thought about all this as we walked further and further into the dark maze. I was already so lost that I probably couldn't make it back out to the entrance if I tried on my own. Luckily the other party members were smart enough to mark each corridor so that we could always just follow our own trail back from where we came. The entire time they took out cobbled's left and right so Drake and myself were starting to feel our backpacks get heavier. Drake probably barely felt a difference, my shoulders were getting stiff already though. We hadn't run into a single piece of treasure which was a bit upsetting seeing as to how that was the main thing we were hoping to find. We were hired to help the other party exterminate the monsters in this labyrinth but the treasure is the cherry on top. It's possible Sion was just getting our hopes up earlier though, I was starting to think that was a possibility at least. Just because they were a famous party in the kingdom didn't mean they weren't adverse to being a bit too optimistic. Well, Sion was actually the only one who talked about treasure so it might just be him. I feel a strong aura in the distance, it must be the boss. Steph said. We must be about halfway through the labyrinth then, everyone keep an eye out. This is where the stronger ones will start showing up. Ian spoke loud enough for us all to hear, though I wondered if that would give our position away. Not that it mattered at this point I guess? It's hard to say, I was feeling skeptical as to how professional this other party really was. If their voices attracted the kobolds and we got swarmed in this small corridor would they be able to handle them? Regardless, I was glad they relayed the situation so that us newbies could be prepared. Drake and myself played video games before and Chio was already an experienced adventurer so we all knew what they meant by boss. Our job would be done soon I figured, it wasn't as taxing as goblin hunts were but it definitely required a lot of patience. We took a right turn down a hall we hadn't been through yet. Sim marked the corner so that we could track our way back later on. From a distance ahead I could hear a roar, and shortly after that a bunch of kobolds came running at us. They were all either cut down or picked off with arrows and their ears, claws and teeth were cut off and placed in our bags. We continued back down the path as if nothing happened. We're getting close to the boss room, I can feel it. Steph announced. They're grouped up more tightly in this area, be ready for an ambush. Ian shouted. Spiritus 5 Dimensio Aperi Fenestrum, Fair Baculum Meum. Steph went on with one of his incantations. 
To my surprise a pale blue light shined from a magic circle that appeared in the air in front of him. After a split second passed he was holding an elaborate and expensive-looking genuine wizard staff. It was a polished mahogany, probably stood about three feet tall, five prongs on the top wrapped around a big red jewel. It looked really cool to be honest and it rounded off the big pointy hat and the robe he wore. The staff probably strengthened his magic so my best guess is he planned to go all out if need be when we get to the boss room. Incoming. Someone shouted before yet another swarm of monsters charged us from up ahead. I was on guard a bit more this time because there was probably about 30 monsters coming at us all at once. We were getting pushed back, though I was confident those guys up front could handle it. Steph, Helena and Che were pushed all the way to the back row with our party. The thing was that when I moved my torch over I thought I could hear some sort of faint noise coming from beyond the wall. I scrunched up my eyebrows as I inched closer and listened in on it. I could tell that whatever it was, it was coming closer so I backed up. I didn't get the chance to warn anyone before a big set of snapping jaws came bursting through the wall. Steph would, immediately gotten shredded but I jabbed the tip of my sword into its mouth. I felt the insane force as it snapped my sword right out of my hand. Steph began chanting an incantation behind me but there was no time. This kobold was twice the size of all the other ones we had seen so far. Its arms easily stretched the length of the labyrinth corridor. It swung its claws directly at Steph which made him cut off his incantation. Before the claws hit their mark one raised my arms, mostly out of desperation in the moment because there was nothing else I could do right then. To my surprise, a blade of wind shot out from my palm and cut a gash right upside the kobold's face. A deep bloody gash was left on its cheek, it wasn't enough to kill it though. It was the same spell Steph had taught me earlier that day, but I didn't chant an incantation so I didn't know how I was able to cast the spell. Come to think of it, there was another time when some strange wind seemed to come from nowhere when I was getting attacked by that polar bear. Luckily, that one spell was enough to catch the kobold off guard and force it to stop its attack against Steph. Suddenly an arrow was shot right into the monster's left eye. The arrow was lodged deep into the pupil and the monster thrashed and wailed in pain. It was at that moment that Chio came dashing in from the other side and gutted the kobold. Likewise, Helena came in for the killing blow and attempted to cut out the monster's throat but she stumbled and missed her mark. It seems the rest of the other party had wrapped up taking down the swarm of the smaller kobolds that were attacking and so Helena got her footing when she saw the opportunity she came in for the last strike on the monster behind her but her stance was still off so she failed to land a decisive blow. Sinus Mundi Veteris Nile Post Turgamud Exendis Iterum, Cremate. Steph cast a huge fire spell that burned so hot that I thought I had breathed in pure flames for a second. I was even seeing spots for a few minutes afterwards as if I had stared into the sun for too long. It all happened so fast I couldn't believe we actually survived. Drake walked up and retrieved his arrow from the kobold's eye, he wiped the blood off on its own charred skin and put it back in his quiver. You, you cast that spell without saying, the incantation earlier. Steph looked at me with incredulous eyes. I didn't know why he was looking at me like that as if he didn't just annihilate that big monster with a huge unbelievably powerful fire spell. Is that bad? I asked. I was looking left and right in pure confusion. It's incredible. Only legendary casters can use silent magic. There's only one mage in the entire kingdom that can use silent magic and he's the most famous magician in our kingdom's history. Other than him, the only others I know of are the demon lords. But I've only ever heard of their capabilities through stories. Is that so? I replied while cutting the left ear from the giant kobold. It was black and burned to a crisp, but I figured we might still be able to get something for it. Also, if it wasn't for your quick action I would have died, so, thank you. Steph said, don't mention it. I replied nonchalantly, honestly I wasn't going out of my way to save him I just acted on instinct. Spiritus V Dimensio Aperi Fenestrum, Ad Ferte Mihi Paginum Magicae Umbri Vetito Torvo. Steph said another incantation and just like with his staff a magic circle lit up the dark corridor, after that he held a piece of parchment in his hand. He looked at it for a while seemingly deep in thought before handing it to me. WH what is this? I asked. 
It's a forbidden spell. I don't have the mana required to use it unfortunately. I'd like you to have it as a token of my gratitude for your help. He sounded much more sincere than he had all day. It was kinda throwing me off. Wait Steph, isn't that the spell you went through hell and back to get your hands on? You spent a fortune on that. Are you really going to give it away just like that? Sion was flabbergasted as he asked Steph about his decision. Is this piece of paper really worth all that? He said it was a forbidden spell or something right? If you don't have the mana to use this then what makes you think I can do anything with it? I asked. I have a hunch that you will become a much better mage than myself in a short amount of time, even if you can't use the spell, if you sell it to the right person you should be able to get enough money to live comfortably for at least a decade. Though keep in mind that spell is forbidden therefore it is considered illegal to own it so be careful who you show it to. What the hell? What kind of shady item are you passing off on me? Thank, you? I honestly didn't know how to respond. Guys come look at this, quick. There's a room back here and it's filled with gold and jewels. Che was shouting from behind the hole in the wall that the giant kobold came through. She sounded excited and from the sound of it for good reason. Whoa this is insane. There's just one problem. I don't think we'll be able to fit all this in a book bag. Sion said. And what a nice problem to have. Che was grinning with dollar signs in her eyes. So then was that the boss? Drake asked. Yeah, the fact it was so much stronger and bigger than the others was one clue. But then also all this treasure it was hoarding is a dead giveaway. It was undoubtedly the boss of this labyrinth. Sim gave us a good explanation. I was kinda disappointed that the fight was over so quickly, plus I never got to see their leader's divine light magic. Oh well, I'm sure we'll work together again in the future so I can see it then. We packed Chio's bag full of gold coins, it was so heavy I couldn't even pick it up so Drake ended up carrying it instead and traded the lighter bag with Chio. That was less than half the money and valuables in the room still so we had to figure out how to carry the rest. Steph used his magic to summon a big tarp, we loaded the rest of the treasure onto it and started making our way out the labyrinth. Gar carried one end and Sion carried the other. As it turned out all the other kobolds were already hunted on the way in so we didn't run into too much trouble on the way out. It took a while to find our way back to the entrance, by the time we're done it was already night time. Out from the darkness and into more darkness. Before we left Steph cast a big explosive spell that collapsed the entrance of the labyrinth so that it wouldn't be used by any more monsters in the future. Part of me wondered if it wouldn't be better to leave it open so that they get paid to conquer the labyrinth over and over again, that's just my scheming side thinking though. Making our way down the steep slope with such heavy bags was a challenge, Sion and Gar had it the worst because the tarp they were using to carry the rest of the treasure was extremely heavy and there were no handles to hold onto or anything. Their backs would definitely feel the pain tomorrow that's for sure, not that that was really my problem though. We made it back to the road eventually, the walk felt much longer than it did on the way to the labyrinth. Luckily, the carriages were waiting for us in the same spot. I wondered how bored the drivers must have been all day just sitting here waiting for us all to come back. We lugged our bags and whatnot onto the carts and then hopped on and got rolling on back to Wallenheim. I couldn't wait to see how much money we were about to get, everyone was in high spirits even though we were so exhausted. I was ready to get paid, take a bath, eat and go right to sleep. 